Right, so in this video, we're going to go over multiplication properties of exponents. Uh, there's two multiplication properties we're going to go through, but the, in this set of notes, we're only talking about the product of two powers, okay? Um, so first off, we need to understand what a power is. So uh, a base with an exponent, like 5 to the 4th right here, that's what a power is considered, okay? So in these examples, we're going to multiply two powers uh, that have the same base in order to use this property, okay? So because these two powers have the same base, I can add those exponents, 5 to the 4 uh, plus 8, and that's going to give me 5 to the 12th, which I could evaluate. This would be a very large number, okay? Uh, but that's going to be 5 to the 12th. Uh, similarly, if we're dealing with variable expressions, these both have the same base x, okay? So I can add those exponents 3 and 7, okay? So x to the 3 plus 7, which gives me x to the 10th power, okay? All right, I wanted to explain that first. Uh, as we kind of go through these, we want to talk about what it means to have an exponential expression that's simplified, okay? Um, we've already gone over negative and zero exponents. You can't have any negative exponents in a simplified expression, okay? The same base, like 5, uh, cannot appear multiple times in a product or a quotient. If it does, then you've got more simplifying to do, okay? You can't have a power, a product, or a quotient uh, that is raised to a power. And the next few sets of notes will uh, show you how to go through and make sure we uh, meet this part of simplifying. And then finally, numerical coefficients uh, can't have any factors in common. Okay? So, back to the product of powers. We've got some examples here. All right? Uh, so, notice we have a power here, 2 to the third power, and we have another power, 2 squared, or 2 to the second power. They have the same base. It's important to understand and notice that. They have the same base. So we've got 2 to the 3 plus 2, which is 2 to the 5th, okay? We're going to stop there for now. We could evaluate that and say the answer is 32, but the purpose of this video is just to show how the exponents are dealt with, okay? Look at number 2. So we've got multiple expressions here. Some have the same base, 3 and 3, and then there are two other terms with the same base, uh, 5 here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to group those together uh, the terms with the same base. So I moved the 3 to the negative 2 up a little bit, and then I moved these two uh, terms with the base 5 back a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do, notice these have the same base, so I can add those exponents here, 4 plus negative 2, okay? 5 and 5 here, those two powers have the same base, so I can add those exponents here. Notice 10 plus negative 7, all right? So 3 here, that's 4 plus negative 2, which is 3 squared, okay? And 5, uh, 10 plus negative 7 is to the third power, so we get 3 squared times 5 cubed. Again, if you were using a calculator, you could multiply these two things um, and get a numeric answer, but for now, let's just worry about the exponents, okay? Uh, stop here. Give number 3 and number 4 a uh, try. Uh, we're dealing with variable expressions here. And then come back and check your work. Okay. Number three is a lot like number two here, okay? Um, so we've got, we're going to group the y's together. We're going to group the z's together, okay? Um, and I'm going to add the exponents. So y is going to be to the 13th power, and z is going to be to the 0 power, okay? And then I can deal with z to the 0. That's going to be 1. So I get y to the 13th, all right? And then finally, number four here, every base is the same, x, so I can just add all those exponents together. When I add those four digits together, I get negative six, okay? And I can't have a negative exponent, remember, so I'm going to move that to the bottom half of the fraction and get one over x to the sixth, okay? All right, pause the video, give number five and six a try, and then come back and check those. Okay, so... Numbers in scientific notation can be multiplied using this product of powers property, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to multiply the 1.32 and the 4.15. Those are the constants within those numbers in scientific notation. And then we can multiply the powers together because they have the same base, okay? We want to make sure we're in scientific notation when we're done, all right? So in one of these cases, you will be in scientific notation when you're finished. In the other one you want. Okay, so we're going to have to do an extra step. All right, so number five, when I multiply 1.32 times 4.15, it 
I get 5.478. So that's good in scientific notation. Remember, our first number has to be between or greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. All right. Now, my factors of 10 here, 10 to the third power, 10 to the seventh power. Notice I can add those exponents. 3 plus 7 is where that 10 comes from. So this would be the answer uh, for the product of number 5. Okay. In number 6, when I multiply the constants, 5.47 times 7.09, I get a number that's not between 1 and 10. Okay, I get 38.7823. Okay, I'm still going to add the exponents uh, for the factors of the powers of 10 here, so that's going to be 10 to the 9th. Okay, but I have to convert this one more time uh, into correct scientific notation. All right, so I'm going to move this decimal one place to the left. When I do that, remember it makes this exponent bigger by 1. So to write that in scientific notation correctly, I'm going to move the decimal again between the 3 and the 8. So I get 3.87823. I've got to raise the exponent by 1, so I get times 10 to the 10th. Okay? So that's how you use the product of powers uh, property here when you're dealing with scientific notation.